In 2018, a yellow cardinal in a backyard in Alabaster, Alabama, was photographed by Jeremy Black and captured on video by Charlie Stevenson. Posts of the video and the photographs of this beautiful bird went viral and became a worldwide sensation. Wild bird enthusiasts remain keenly interested in yellow cardinals. Indeed, this week I was interviewed by a reporter from the Chicago Tribune about a yellow cardinal that's been spotted in Illinois. Because I spent my life studying feather pigmentation, I can explain this fascinating phenomenon and answer some of the more frequently asked questions regarding yellow plumage coloration. So join me as I explain the yellow cardinal. Okay, I think most people would already realize, but it's worth pointing out, that it's not just a single yellow cardinal. It's not the yellow cardinal. It's it's a it's a population of yellow cardinals. Actually, it's a it's a reoccurring uh, color state of cardinals that pops up periodically around the country. So, since the original uh, most famous yellow cardinal, the bird in alabaster, that was uh, got the whole interest in this phenomenon going, and that was a subject of a lot of uh, of a lot of fun uh, scrutiny and watching. Uh, there's been uh, yellow cardinals here and there around the country. Uh, there actually was a fairly well-known yellow cardinal in Cleveland, Ohio, back in 2013 that got some play, especially among the Ohio birders, but got a little bit of national play. But for some reason, that never gained the traction, never gained the national notoriety of the alabaster uh, yellow cardinal. There's There were yellow cardinals in Pensacola, Florida, uh, East Tennessee, Laurel, Delaware, Theodore, Alabama, uh, South, uh, uh, Alabaster's in the northern part of the state. Theodore's uh, down uh, near the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Boynton Beach, Florida, uh, Port St. Lucie, Florida. Cardinals are most dense in the south, uh, and that's why the preponderance of sightings, I believe, come from the south. Uh, Louisiana in 2019. Roanoke, Virginia, and these are just a few of the sightings that I found in going back through old emails that, that I'd been contacted about. There's many more than this. There's a really nice website uh, devoted to yellow cardinals that is kind of a clearinghouse for sightings, and you can find uh, a lot more records there. I'll put a link to this Facebook page in the information section of this video. So it may give you the impression that this really isn't a, a, a rare thing, but, but it is. I called it a one in a million bird when I was first contacted about the alabaster Alabama bird. And I think one in a million is probably a pretty good ballpark guess here. Uh, cardinals are a tremendously abundant bird. Uh, there's well over uh, 12 million, say, in, in uh, the eastern North America. And I think at any one time, there's probably about a dozen yellow cardinals uh, known in yards uh, around the country. Now, one thing I want to really focus on in this video is uh, identifying yellow cardinals. And uh, for experienced bird watchers, this isn't a great challenge, but uh, the excitement about yellow cardinals has brought in a lot of people who are very casual birders, and it's really easy to mistake a female cardinal, a typical female cardinal, for that sought-after yellow cardinal. So um, we're all familiar with uh, male northern cardinals, uh, brilliant red, although not always brilliant red uh, feathers. Typical males are quite bright red, but they vary a lot. This is actually what I study, I, uh, not so much in cardinals and house finches. But anyway, there's individual variation, but they're all, it's red. Uh, for a human eye, uh, uh, our perception of all typical cardinals is red. And then the typical female cardinal uh, has a distinctive red coloration on the tail and primaries. Uh, and then buffy, yellowish, greenish, uh, body coloration. 
and they have a black mask, but it's not a bold black mask. It's kind of a charcoal gray uh, black mask. And so female cardinals, and especially depending on the light, can look quite yellowish. But let's go to the yellow cardinal now. The yellow cardinals have the bold black face of a, uh, of a typical red northern cardinal. And against that yellow background, it, it looks even bolder and brighter. Uh, and, and then the, at all the spots in the plumage that would be red in a typical red male cardinal are now yellow. There's no red whatsoever in the feathers, although the bill's still pink. Um, now, contrast this with the female cardinal where you have that uh, quite conspicuous red feathering in the wings and tail. If you see red feathers of, on any part of a cardinal, it's not the yellow cardinal. And I'll explain why that is biochemically in a few slides. Okay, to explain the yellow cardinal, I have to um, present a bit of an overview of the way that, that birds in general get yellow, orange, and red uh, feather coloration. I'm not going to go into this in great detail, but with just a few points presented, I think it's easy enough to understand the basics of what's going on with yellow cardinals. Okay, first of all, um, with very few exceptions that we won't even worry about here, for a bird to have yellow, orange, or red feather coloration, it has to ingest, has to eat uh, yellow, orange, or red pigments called uh, carotenoid pigments. And Carotenoid pigments are very common in uh, essentially all vegetable matter, and they're very common in insects. So, so most birds uh, ingest carotenoids, just like humans commonly ingest uh, carotenoids. Now, for uh, almost all songbirds and woodpeckers, there's very few or no red pigments in their diet. Even when birds are eating red berries and, and uh, red foods, that usually is not uh, carotenoid pigments. That's other plant pigments. So uh, red-bellied woodpeckers and scarlet tanagers and, uh, and vermilion flycatchers all um, eat yellow pigments and have to convert their yellow pigments to red. And this is a process in the body that is enabled by enzymes. Okay, again, we're not going to get very technical, but that's how basically every biochemical aspect of, of animal body uh, proceeds is, is by uh, proteins that we call enzymes. Okay, and so to uh, change a red bird to yellow, be it uh, the cardinal, northern cardinal, or uh, another species, you basically knock out the pathway, knock out the enzyme that does that yellow to red uh, conversion. And that's what happened with individual male cardinals. Because this has never been studied in detail genetically, we have to presume, but we know that this is almost certainly uh, a mutation, probably a point mutation. That means a single letter in the genetic code was changed. And if you randomly change a letter in the genetic code, it's almost certainly going to be bad. It, it, very, very rarely it'll be good. Uh, but usually it's bad, and it's, it's way easier to destroy something than to create it. And so uh, this mutational change uh, would have prevented the function of this enzyme. So the birds no longer can convert yellow pigments to red pigments. That means they just put the yellow pigments straight into their feathers. The genetics of yellow coloration in cardinals has never been studied but years ago, a biologist who at the time was my grad student, uh, Kevin McGraw, now a professor at Arizona State University, and I actually did a pigmentary analysis of the only yellow cardinal that I know of that's in a museum collection. There's a yellow cardinal in the Louisiana State University Museum of Natural History that was collected in, in Baton Rouge in the 1980s. And uh, Kevin McGraw and I got feather samples from that specimen and did biochemical analysis. 
and we confirmed that the chemical composition of those feathers was just what you'd expect if there had been a disruption in the pathway leading to red coloration. Okay, if all birds with red feather coloration are subject to the disruption of the pathway leading to red, if mutation should occur in all these red species, why is there so much focus on yellow cardinals? Why, why don't we get excited about yellow scarlet tanagers or uh, yellow house finches? Well, in, in part, it's because cardinals are so familiar. Uh, they, they come to feeders, they get watched and looked at, and the yellow individuals get found at a higher rate. But I think more than that, uh, cardinals have a few characteristics that makes a yellow individual really stand out. First of all, they only have one molt per year. So adult male cardinals are always red. A yellow bird stands out. So contrast that with scarlet tanagers, which uh, have two molts per year, and they cycle between a yellow plumage and a red plumage. Well, people are used to seeing yellow scarlet tanagers. That's all you see in the fall. So it's not quite as special as the yellow cardinal. If we consider house finches, this is actually very interesting to me as a scientist, but uh, we regularly see yellow and orange house finches in, in populations of house finches at feeders. A yellow house finch in the east is not a one in a million bird. It's more like a one in a hundred bird. And there's some populations in California where it's more like a one in five bird. Now this is a different phenomenon. The yellow house finches do not represent a point mutation knocking out the pathway. And the house finch, for reasons we don't fully understand, and this has been my life's work trying to understand this, uh, when, when birds are in reduced condition, if they're sick, if they are stressed in some way, they, the pathway to red feather coloration shuts down and they produce yellow and orange coloration. That doesn't happen to cardinals. Uh, it doesn't happen to scarlet tanagers very often, although if you look in your bird books, you'll see the orange variant. I think it does happen a little bit in scarlet tanagers. But house finches are not unique, but they are one of the birds that really uh, responds to stress by changing their feather coloration. Uh, and despite 30 years of study on this, I can't give a, a really good answer for why that's happening. I can give some answers, but we're still working on that uh, question. Okay, so what about some of the other red birds that we're all familiar with? Do they all show a yellow variant? Well, I don't know about all of them, but it's not hard to find a lot of examples of this. I literally started doing some very superficial Google searches as I was preparing this video. I, I didn't know of any yellow red-bellied woodpeckers, but a couple keystrokes, and there's a picture of a, of a perfectly healthy red-bellied woodpecker with a yellow instead of a red nape. What about purple finch, the bird in the same genus as, as the house finch? Well... There's a picture of a yellow purple finch. And by the way, this, uh, the, the coloration in male purple finches is not flexible like we see in house finches. And there was a, there was a picture uh, that got circulated a lot of a beautiful rose-breasted gro grosbeak with a yellow breast instead of a rose breast. So uh, it's not surprising. Uh, it, it, all that is required is a mutation that disrupts the pathway from yellow to red, and you end up with a yellow bird instead of a red bird. The yellow cardinal is a great entry point for learning about bird coloration and the, the basis for variation among birds in, in their coloration. Differences between young and old birds, male and female birds, and uh, variation within a, an age and sex class like the yellow cardinal among the red cardinals. Now, for anybody that whose interest has been piqued by this introduction to color genetics and bird coloration, I've written a, a book a few years ago that's really directed toward non-scientists with an interest in in bird coloration. So this book was put out by National Geographic 
National Geographic bird coloration. It's a few years old now, but the information is still accurate. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying this channel. If, if you are, please uh, think about uh, clicking on the like button and so please subscribe if you find this channel interesting. Okay, well, with that new knowledge of bird coloration, get out and see some birds. Thank you.